Well, with Mr Albanese determined to bring in, a, it seems, the population of Canberra every year, although they say they're, they're going to change that, a lot of questions have been asked about whether there will be real change. How are people going to be accommodated in the cities if they all buy electric cars? Well, they won't. Uh, we don't have the roads. We don't have the electricity. We don't have the water. We don't have the sewerage systems. Um, we don't have the houses. Uh, and we're not constructing houses at the rate that are necessary. And secondly, we're not constructing houses to be able to have a 415-volt power system which or transformers such that you can uh, charge up cars. So this is all um, ideological hot air. But the, when the rubber hits the road, we don't have the infrastructure. We can't do it. Yes. And much as I would like to see this country uh, thrive and prosper with immigrants, um, we're getting immigrants now uh, who are absolutely and totally not able to add to the economy. I often travel from airports to where I'm going in taxis. A lot of these taxi drivers are Indian students. They have a degree from an institution here. They haven't gone back to India. Um, they cannot um, work in their chosen area. They cannot add value to society and we cannot have an economic boom led by taxi drivers and baristas. And that's what this immigration policy is heading for. We need people um, who are highly skilled and the cheapest and best way to do that is to use our own people and to start reversing the 60-year decline that we've had in our education system, to have areas which are difficult. People say that mathematics and science and engineering are difficult, but these difficult subjects, if you study them and put it into practice, those are the areas that build the country. It's not being a taxi driver or a barista. So we need a, a reform rather than avoiding the problem and having a Ponzi scheme we were just increasing the number of people, increasing the country's GDP, but people's personal wealth is going down. One of uh, your killer pieces of information, I call them killer in that they just knock you over so that you could say, well, this couldn't, this, this just destroys the theory of uh, man-made global warming. And one of them is what you just mentioned a few minutes ago, and that is uh, that in all of the ice ages known in, uh, th on this planet. At the beginning of each ice age, there was more CO2 in the atmosphere than there is today, much more. And so how on earth could CO2 be causing global warming? And uh, that, what, what happens when you tell people that? You, you say that uh, some people have disowned you and uh, don't, won't have well, anything they, to they do with it. Well, they say, oh, that's just geology. They say, oh, that's just geology. And the, the answer to that is, well, the rules of physics and chemistry uh, haven't changed over time. Those, those laws are still there. So uh, you're trying to argue that because you're alive today, uh, the chemistry and physics which has kept this planet going for thousands of millions of years is different. Um, I might also come back with the argument saying we have drill cores into polar ice. And uh, those, uh, those drill cores tell us about the past. So when snow falls, it collects a little bit of air and drops on, onto polar areas and is compressed and compressed with more and more snow into ice. That ice has trapped air in it. And so if you've got a drill core, you can take it out and from various volcanic ashes, you can work out when uh, this material formed and you can actually calculate saying, well, um, at this period of time, uh, we had this carbon dioxide content. So you can measure those little bubbles of air in what was snow, and it's now ice, and that is ancient air, fossilised air, and you can measure what the carbon dioxide content was. From the ice, you can do various chemical tricks and work out what the air temperature was. So we can plot air temperature over time, and we can plot carbon dioxide over time. And what happens is every time we've had a natural warming, Thousands of years later, we get an increase in carbon dioxide. So it's not carbon dioxide that drives warming. It's actually warming that drives carbon dioxide. And this has been known in chemistry only for 200 years. We've validated that with ice core drilling. We know it from looking at when we had the major glaciation start. So scientifically, 
It's absolute codswallop. But the people who are marketing this global warming myth are mathematicians who are eminently unemployable, so they call themselves <laughs> climate scientists, and they live in institutes which we pay for, and they give us a st- scare story about something that's going to happen way into the future. They don't tell us about the present and the past. So if we use their past models, we see that they've been making models for the last 40 years. And we can look at their success rate over the last 40 years and compare it with the measurements. It's an absolute disaster. These models overcook, and they probably overcook because they think carbon dioxide is a major component of warming. So uh, we have had some fundamental scientific errors And those promoting those views don't care because they're unemployable and the only way that they can survive is to frighten us witless from a climate institute and get paid by our taxpayers' money. And sometimes when these people retire, they'll say, and quite publicly quite often, oh, well, you know, we knew it was garbage, but we had to stay alive. Uh, We had to get our research grants. And governments don't fund research grants with people pursuing curiosity and that's the way you make discoveries they pursue research grants that reinforce their ideology and that's what's happening Uh, the ideology of climate change is being reinforced if i wanted a research grant um, to give the history of the planet demonstrating that emissions of carbon dioxide don't drive global warming i would never get funded but if i looked at the history of the planet that i can show you that from that human emissions drive global warming, I would get funded.